Typing.annotated is one of those weird things in Python because it bridges the gap between actual functionality and types. It allows you to assign metadata to a type, which can be literally anything, and that can be fetched at runtime to perform special operations. The use case we're going to look at in this video is attribute validation, but you can also use it for things like dependency injection and lazy evaluation as well. So really, it's a good one to know about all around. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to see them earlier than anyone else, you can join as a member by using the link in the description below. With all that the way, let's find out what typing.annotated is and all the crazy ways in which we can use it. I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm recording this on my PC instead of my Mac as a little bit of a test uh, to see how it goes. So let me know what you think. Uh, definitely not using Arch, by the way. Um, <laughs> but to start using uh, typing.annotated, all we have to do is from typing import annotated. Whoopsie daisies. And then for my use example, I actually want to do uh, import any from there as well. And then we want to do from data classes, import data class, and then field. And we are going to do my favorite example, uh, which is the profile. Hey. And we're going to have name, string, age, which is going to be in for now. We're going to come back to that with annotated later. And we're going to do jobs, list, string, and then for posterity, we're going to do field. Uh, default factory equals list. Uh, if you don't know what data classes are, you can look at my video from a few weeks ago, I think, uh, that goes into detail about how all these work. But this is a pretty simple example that has a uh, name, age, and jobs. In a different video, I forget which one, maybe the descriptors one, I know I've done so many at this point, we talked about how to use it for validation purposes. And we made sure that age was a positive integer. And what I may or may not have mentioned in that video was that you can actually use annotated to do the same thing. And that's because annotated has um, a bit of a superpower about it. So to use annotated to do that, we can simply do uh, annotated like that. And then this takes two arguments. So the first one is the actual type itself. So, and that'll be an int. And this int will be used by the type checker to make sure that age is indeed an integer. The second argument is metadata. And this metadata is completely ignored by the type system, but can actually be um, looked up or accessed by the code. So you can put something in here maybe to run, say a validator, for example. And we could do a simple validator that's just a, a Lambda function uh, that takes an argument, which will be the age, and then do age is greater than zero. And now we can run this to actually make sure that age is greater than zero. And to do that in a simple way, we could do, uh, we can have a set atra down here, which takes name and value. And this controls um, what happens when you set an attribute on a class um, or a data class, it works on both. And we can do if fields uh, self dot data class fields dot get name. Uh, so we are actually getting the the field and this is a field object. And then we can check if metadata and I'm going to get rid of this sidebar actually for this uh, is get atra field dot type, which is the type annotation. So it will do this. And then if it's annotated, it will have a uh, dunder metadata attribute and we can set none if it doesn't have it and so if it does have a dunder metadata attribute we can see oh it's an annotated type we probably have some metadata in here and then we can just do something like assert uh, metadata zero because it will get uh, you can pass multiple things in here so you could if you wanted to pass multiple validators so we could say uh, lambda x x is less than 100 for example, um, we don't want to do that in this example, but you could do that. Uh, so it would give you a list of all the different metadata entries. So we want to get the zeroth one in our case. And then because this is a function, we want to pass the value to it, which is the value that we're setting for the age in our case. And then if that fails, we can just have like uh, invalid uh, value. I'll copy paste it from my notes actually, because it's just a lot of typing without much meaning. It's just a nice little error message have on the metadata 
So if it's not correct, it'll say invalid value passed a name field value. Fantastic. And then we want to make sure that we call super dot set atra uh, name and value just to make sure that the rest of the logic gets played out after that. So we just add a check in here um, to, to well to check for annotated types essentially. And now we can come and create our uh, class down here. So p equals profile. Do 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 do. do, do. Uh, my name is Ethan, my age is 26, and I have a job as a software engineer, Ooh, very fancy, and also probably rather expected. And then we can print P just to make sure it's all working fine. And it, ooh, that was that was a lot that went on there very quickly. I forgot I had that arch thing up. <laughs> uh, we can do pi validation.py, and it works fine. Everything works as you expect. If we set this to say minus 26, it will now complain to this um, and it will show that it's this uh, value here that is wrong and it will give us the message invalid value passed to age field uh, negative 26. So that's actually run through this check, looked at this annotated, um, seen this metadata, run this function. This function has then returned false because negative uh, 26 is not greater than zero and then we raise an assertion error down here. This also works if you were to set uh, an attribute retroactively. So if we just set p.age equals minus 26 or negative 26, then it will do the same thing. So we get the print when it's constructed because we pass something valid, but then we set p.age equals negative 26 down here, and then we got an assertion error. And that's coming through the Dunder set atra. An example of this being used similarly in the real world is message spec. So I did a video about this recently as well. Uh, but message spec uses it, where is it, um, this, yeah, this message spec dot meta thing. So you have your annotated um, type here, that is an integer, and this is actually the same example, so it checks for a positive int, and then you have this message spec meta greater than zero, and this does its own checks in a slightly more comprehensive way than the way that we looked at, I didn't want to overcomplicate it too much. Uh, but this is the primary way, and maybe the only way, I'm not sure, uh, that message spec does its validations. Um, Pedantic does validations in the same way. You can use annotated, you don't have to, but they recommend you do. Uh, and it works in a very similar way um, to how it works here in message spec. I was originally gonna code some more examples like I normally do, but a lot of annotated use cases are quite advanced. And to be honest, they all work in roughly the same way because you just check for the metadata field um, pretty much however you do it. Uh, so I'm going to show some more use cases that are in the real world of annotated. So another one is dependency injection in fast API, which uses annotated uh, down here. So we have this annotated uh, type to this commons. It is a dict and it depends on common parameters. So this depends class, let me zoom this in a bit actually. Uh, this depends class um, takes a callable as an argument, which is this callable up here and then calls it. And then this becomes the value of commons. Um, I don't really fully understand how dependency injection works. I was actually gonna make a video about it and then it didn't really work, so I, I canned it for now. Um, but yeah, you can use annotated for dependency injection. You can also use it for lazy types like Strawberry does. Um, so Strawberry, this is a GraphQL um, library and has been my work life for the last seven months, basically. Um, so I'm starting to get very familiar with this. I want to do a video about it at some point. Uh, but this has two classes here, one in post, uh, or sorry, one called post and one called user uh, that are dependent on each other. And it uses annotated to then uh, use a type hint. So you can actually use the type checking up here to avoid having a circular import. And then you can use the strawberry.lazy, which will then lazily import that module and then call this type when it's actually needed. Um, so this is a way that you can get around um, circular imports uh, by using annotated, which is also really cool. Let me know in the comments what ideas you've come up with with how to use this. I want to see some more use cases if you've got them. If you want to see other ways that Python is awesome, then you can check out the Python is Awesome playlist that's linked in the end screen, or you can check out any of the cars because I did reference quite a lot of videos in this one. This is a good one for self-promotion, I think. Uh, but I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.